This is probably the moment where this man knew he fucked up, because what comes next is carnage. In a moment's time the cyclist will get slaughtered, but before that happens let's pull back a bit and check out his attackers. First there's this man, in a hat and a long fancy jacket. He looks pretty important, but apparently doesn't take himself too seriously because he's really enjoying himself. There are men with big moustaches acting like children and some actual children. There's this group of women in petticoats and have a good look at this man, because he is about to deliver the fatal blow to our cyclist. This bullet in the neck proves fatal, his hat flies into the air and a brave man collapses. The group now has a common enemy, they immediately swarm their victim and simply annihilate him. Someone tries to steal the cyclist's bike, but he's not having that, he takes it back and retreats to where he came from. Maybe he's going back home to get some dry clothes, anyway he leaves his hat on the battlefield. Bataille de Boule de Neige is a wonderful little sequence, and whenever I see it I want to watch it over and over again. These people are 120 years away from us, yet they feel so very close. It's the closest to time travel we will ever get, I think. So let's dig a little deeper and look at how and where the film came to be, and why it's so special. The snow fight was shot by Auguste and Louis Lumiere, the two brothers that are often called the fathers of cinema. They were manufacturers of photography equipment and best known for their invention of the cinematograph an all-in-one device that could record, develop and project motion pictures. With it they produced a series of well-known short films to showcase their new technology. And the snowball fight was shot in the streets of Lyon, right here. The street of course looks completely different today, but you can still see a couple things that have remained, like this wall and this building here. And if we turn around we'll find the Institut Lumière. That's no coincidence because on that exact same spot the Lumière brothers had their factory where they produced their photographic plates. This is the site today and this is how it was in 1920. This is the spot where the Lumière brothers shot their very first film, La Sortie de l'Usine, which shows the workers leaving the factory and going home on a spring day. In the following winter they shot the snowball fight right here. We can't say for sure, but chances are that the people in that snowball fight, just like the people in La Sortie de l'Usine, are also just a bunch of factory workers that were called outside by their bosses on a snowy day to film a snow fight, because as you can see, that makes for a good video. And in that case, the cyclist probably is a factory worker as well, placed in the scene to add some story and drama. Once upon a time there was a man riding a bike until suddenly he got swarmed in a snowball fight. He took some blows but gets away and lives happily ever after. The end. That's the arch of the story and I don't know what you think but to me that's almost too good to be spontaneous. It's soothing to see young and old people from different classes having fun together but just like La Sortie de l'Usine or Arroseur Arrosé, the snowball fight also probably has been staged. Nevertheless, it looks really spontaneous. That's because the joy on those people's faces, without a doubt, is real. The film shows that grown-ups have enjoyed acting like kids for centuries now. And that's reassuring, it's that joy that makes the film so fascinating. But the film I've been showing you this entire time, of course, isn't the original video. This is, and it feels completely different. It's much harder to see the joy on those people's faces and as a result you feel less empathy. Seeing this you immediately realize that it dates far back. The film is dirty, jerky and just doesn't look good. This look and feel creates a distance between us and what we're seeing. But this is different. This feels like you could just step into the scene and participate in the fight. The distance is gone. That's because the film was restored by Dmitry Baden. He used a combination of the AI-powered software Deoldify and his own algorithms to upscale, stabilize and colorize the footage. The software also added extra frames to make the film much smoother. And as a result we can see details in the people's faces and clothing that we can't see in the original. So this version of the video is pretty much artificial, but to be honest the original film was artificial as well. 
Movies are nothing more than light caught on film, moving at 24 frames a second before our eyes. It's an illusion of movement. There's nothing real about it. However, the original film is rooted in reality. It registered something that really happened. A great part of the restored version, however, did not exactly happen the way we see it here. The AI colorized and upscaled the footage and generated artificial images that fit between the original frames. These extra frames are not based on reality, but on what the AI thinks fits best. It just fills the gaps, so it might look mind-blowing, a great part of this version is fake. And yet, ironically, the rendition that isn't rooted in reality is the one that feels closest to reality. Things that are fake but feel real, they are everywhere online. Fake news, deepfake video, deepfake audio, those things are dangerous, but in this particular case, it doesn't really matter, I think. Because the snowball fight is just a little story caught on film that transports us to another time and place. It makes us forget whatever we were doing or thinking about. And I suspect that these two people right here are feeling the same. They are probably not factory workers, but just bystanders, amused by that snowball fight and maybe also fascinated by the cinematograph, that strange contraption that is capturing the fight. Because back then, that thing was still a brand new and mysterious piece of technology. Very much like artificial intelligence is pretty mind-blowing to us right now. In that sense, these two people, they are us, the audience, gazing at a new piece of technology, but most of all, enjoying a wonderful little story unfolding. And isn't that what cinema is all about?